Power Standard 9, Authors, Choices, and Literature. So if you reflect back, remember, Power Standard 9 is all about how we analyze the decisions that an author makes in creating a story, and that these decisions um, using different things like those four tricks we talked about, plot, setting, conflict, and theme, and then using devices like foreshadowing, time manipulation, pacing, flashbacks, um, using those different devices to build suspense within you, the reader. Remember, an author that writes a story is trying to entertain you. They're trying to keep you hooked and engaged, and they're trying to get you to think and to stay invested in the story. They want you to get in the car, aka the story, <clears throat> and stay for the entire trip. In order to do that, they have to use those four tricks and those um, tools like um, foreshadowing and irony and inferences and pacing and time manipulation to keep you invested. But one thing they definitely use is foreshadowing. <clears throat> foreshadowing is where the author is going to be dropping you clues like the lights suddenly flickered in the dark alley. Boom. That's foreshadowing. That's letting you know that something is about to happen. Or Monty gets in his car. He look, glances over to the gas gauge and realizes he is right above E. The sign in front of him says, next gas station, 75 miles. Automatically, we have foreshadowing. <clears throat> and that foreshadowing creates suspense. That's that feeling of not knowing what's going to happen next in the story. So you want to keep reading. And that's what this power center is about. All we're doing is taking the tools we know, the tricks that we know the author has in their arsenal, and then the devices they use with those tricks to keep us entertained, engaged, hooked, invested, and interested in the story. So let's read this text right here. The road wound this way and that as I drove through the fog. One of my headlights was out and there was an eerie stillness in the forest. So right now, the trick that the author's using is the setting. He's given us a, an image of the setting. So it's fog, it's a windy road. Ooh, that's a little dangerous. One of my headlights is out, there's stillness. So automatically I have suspense, and now the, I realize the author is foreshadowing something is going to happen. They're giving me hints. The winding road, the fog, the headlights are out. All those are different hints. What is about to happen? So which part of the following passage is most clearly an example of foreshadowing? So let's read this and pause me and read it, and then let's come back with the correct answer in a moment. So let's deconstruct it. The guy looked normal enough, medium height. So we, the author is giving us a physical description. He sat at a table in the back of the restaurant. As Sarah approached him with her pen and pad, what can I get you, she asked, smiling. Nothing, I don't feel any tension or suspense building yet. The guy hadn't even opened his menu. Coffee with no cream or sugar, nothing to eat, thank you. Mm, don't really see how that's dropping a hint or a clue. When Sarah leaned in to retrieve his menu, she caught a whiff of an animal scent. Then the man grabbed the menu with lightning speed and Sarah noticed thick, dark hair on his hands. I'll keep the menu, thanks. So she tried to lean in to get in his area and she noticed an animal scent. That's when the pace all of a sudden starts quickening up. Notice how the pacing that the author using is just average. It's just kind of slow. Then all of a sudden, when? So when is one of those shifting pacing words that when you see it, you know that the author is getting ready to quicken the pace, so you want to pay attention. So that is another pacing and foreshadowing we kind of work hand in hand. So the answer to this question is this sentence right here. Let's try another one. So Let's read this text and let's see how the author, can you find where the author is using foreshadowing in the passage to create the suspense? Pause me and answer. So, a formal dinner, but he strolled in with no tire sports coat. Character, 
And clearly, he's not dressed appropriately. Just ripped blue jeans and a white tee. Shauna made a gesture in his direction. Did you read the invitation? No, why not? Aren't you worried about the consequences? The boy smirked, wrinkling up his face like a mischievous cartoon character. So now we know he's mischievous. He smirked. He wasn't phased by the fact he wasn't dressed appropriately. I have my own way of doing things. So the suspense, which is not really a big feeling of dread or trouble, but we do know that this boy is outside the box. He's a rebel. Reflect back to our archetypes. So he wonders what other rules he may break. So now we know that this character is going to be important for our narrator. So last thing, let's read this passage from the story of Edward Sawtell and answer the question, how does foreshadowing create suspense in the passage below? So we have Edgar. It sounded so rational, the alternative so clear. So he nodded. So clearly there's something happening with Edgar. It would be much later before he realized they seduced themselves that night, seduced themselves into believing they understood all the costs and consequences of what they wanted. So th they want something, and they think they've weighed everything out, that no mistake could equal what had already had happened. So they feel like the decision they made is a good one and that nothing's going to happen, that their calm wasn't simply a veneer. And veneer just means a mask. So they're calm about everything. Everything's so rational and calm. But it would be much later before. So that is the moment where the author is foreshadowing that, hey, something is about to happen. Something's going on. All right. So remember, with suspense, the suspense builds as the story's conflicts develops and intensifies. So now, now the author is using the plot of the story to also intensify, to intensify the suspense. So below is a passage in which prideful o Owen, who doesn't skate very well, tries to cross a large frozen river. That's already foreshadowing off the gate. But notice how the suspense rises as the conflict through the plot progresses. So let's watch. Owen sped, gained speed by the second. He tapped his pocket where he kept his lucky Swiss army knife. Though he had no need for luck charms now, as there was a newfound swagger in every stride. Okay. He was nearing his goal, the far side of the Dawson River, his legs chugging like pistons as he imagined the dialers' faces. But just then, his right skate, look right there, but just then, that's automatic suspense. He flapped his arms. The ice toward the far shore was, was solid. It was breaking up only 50 yards away. Uh-oh, conflict. Man versus nature. Thinking quickly, he slid on the side, digging the good skate into ice in a shower of misty shavings. But when you see but, you know there's a shift. Mere moments later, <clears throat> in a long crackle and quick splash, Owen found himself flailing in the dark, rigid water, grabbing unsuccessfully at the smooth shelf. So we have different moments where the suspense is killing us. But the, the best part was when he mentioned that Swiss Army knife. He kept his luckies. He tapped, but he had no need for good luck. So now we get the foreshadowing. There's something important about that Swiss Army knife. He didn't need it, though. And then the greatest suspense is at its peak when we have the long crackle and quick splash. So an author has many different tools in their arsenal through plot, conflict, characters, conflict, characters, conflict to help, and then foreshadowing that's going to help you build suspense. And then they use pacing and time manipulation in order to um, create the suspense in you to keep you invested, hooked, interested, and thinking about the text. See you later.